So hello and welcome along to another edition of Isolation Interviews for Hospital Radio and my YouTube channel. And uh, I'm super excited that my guest today is a, well, she's just an acting, she's acting royalty. She is, of course, Shelley oh, King. Thank you for joining me, Shelley. Oh, thank you so very much. Acting royalty, my God. <laughs> At last, I, I aspire beyond the <laughs> medium of desire. Thank you. Now, obviously, in a moment, we will talk about Coronation Street, because what a year you have had on Coronation Street. But first of all, I just wanted to ask, how has your year been? Because it's been very hectic for everyone. But how have you been coping with the different stages of lockdown and tier systems and all of that? Well, it, 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 it was madness, because we actually, we just finished the major part of the, uh, of the Jeff uh, story. Not the major part, but we've done, we've done up to just up to the, the stabbing with the bottle. And we were all prepared to go on and then wham, nothing, nothing. And uh, so, so that was a, I stayed in Manchester because um, we didn't know w what was gonna happen and how, whether we were gonna be allowed to keep on shooting, but we weren't. And uh, yeah, I had a very quiet time there with my partner was uh, with me and um, you know, we, we walked around the keys, which is, um, which is lovely. And then, you know, just waiting, waiting, waiting to come back. And then when we did finally come back in June, all the storylines or the, or the line of progression within the storyline had, had to be rewritten. Um, so um, I went to jail, as you all know. Um, and I stayed there for some months and it was very cold in there, let me tell you. <laughs> Because am, am I right? Am I right in thinking that originally the storyline wasn't you weren't supposed to end up in hospital and and pass out, yeah, and that actually you were going to do the court scene sort of June time? Yeah, there were there was there were sort of two court scenes. There was a, there was first a one where uh, I I would be found guilty, and then um, and then I would appeal, and in that time between the, there would be interaction between myself and Jeff and. Um, but no, it all it, it, it all changed because we could, you know, it would have been take, it would have taken too long to carry on with that because people have already been waiting and watching, you know, three episodes a week, and it, I think we all thought that that would just be too much, and people were just saying, when when are we going to hear? When are we going to have the court? So, um, so we did that, but um, you know, it, that the time in prison was actually very useful because it gave me a lot of time or gave Yasmin a lot of time to think about who she was, to talk about who she was. Um, so, you know, and, and all the conversations that I had with when Jeff was trying. So we tried, did try to, to recreate, and the, and the script writers and the producers did an extraordinary job to recreate what would have been a longer passage of time. Um, and then, and, and yeah, the, 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 some wonderful writing and some great stuff in the, um, um, in the court scenes. So, um, so yeah, so the next question I was going to ask is obviously, you know, you've been on the show since 2014. So when you suddenly have a break in filming for, you know, obviously reasons that, that couldn't be stopped or, he you know, yeah. helped, how did you yeah. find that? Because that must be very weird when you're used to just keep, keep going. Well, do you know, I, the thing is, I've been an actor. This is, I'm just about to go into my 44th year as an actor. I started off in... Uh, uh, not 2000, no, I think 2000, 1977. Um, so as an actor, one is very used, actually, to have these spurts or even a year, two years of supreme busyness where it's, it's sort of, it seems like, you know, sometimes you're out of work for six months or, or whatever, and then you get four jobs at once. So, um, you know, one is very used to, one is very used to having long periods of unemployment, as it were. And I think, um, I think we were better equipped in a way, or I was better, my friends, and, and we were better equipped to deal with that. Um, and my partner, who's a director and, a, and an actor as well, you know, we spent a lot of time together anyway, um, um, or, or, or did, certainly before Corrie. Corrie's changed our lives quite considerably, and that sort of commitment um, actually has been uh, hard to adapt to rather than the other way around. Um, because, you know, you, I, had, I now also live in Manchester, and uh, you know, obviously we have different work times and different workplaces, but, uh, you know, we, we, we sort of manage. We, and and in, in a way, lockdown's been very useful to us 
in a way because there are these Zoom things and Trilby's been ma managing to, to work, um, and she's an associate rather, managing to work through Zoom. And um, the awakening of, of the possibilities of this form of, of teaching and communication is, is great, I think. You know, I think people have become, um, have begun to deal with it more easily, not necessarily me, because as I said, dinosaur, look, you just look at it, you can see the hump in the jaws at the back. But anyway, um, um, but yeah, the, I mean, I'm, yes, used to, used, used to long periods of, of, of st uh, static time in one's life. And, then, uh, yeah. and I mean, the other thing that I've been talking about with quite a few of my guests over this time is that obviously it's also given us a greater appreciation for the amazing NHS that we have, um, yeah. you know, the, the amazing work they do, and they've continued on every day regardless, um, yeah. while a lot of people are obviously, you know, doing their best to, to keep safe. They're, they're out there on the front line doing such a great job. Well, well, no, absolutely, you know, and I suppose my message to everybody would be you've got to play by the rules, you know, because there are people whose lives depend on the rulings and no more, none more so than, than as you say, people who work in the NHS, carers, key workers. My goodness, we owe it to them to obey the rules, to keep ourselves out of the hospital as well, you know, and not, and, and not possibly um, pass this on to people on the streets because it is now particularly a virulent force, isn't it? This, 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 this COVID um, thing, this, this, what's it called? You know, the little that cell with all its, all its horrible the, 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 Yeah, the virus, the... Uh... the virus, yeah, yeah, that, that with all its new 23 variations. And you never know, you know, it, I'm, I'm a great, I'm a great, um, racing i love motor racing and i love cars and it it's sort of in a strange way to, to to think that lewis hamilton you know who is in this bubble of protection got covid and as as did sergio perez and they but i mean they do work i suppose in a, in a huge you know each each of them have had big big cohort groups i suppose um so you know, the thing is that he might have gotten a tray from somebody who gave him food that had, and so, you know, please don't get complacent anybody because even though you might, we might think we're being really, really careful, wash your hands, use the disinfectants because people out there who could save lives and maybe your life are, you know, are dependent upon your, upon your, your care really. So, um, yeah, I mean, you know, the NHS have done oh, everybody. You know, my 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 uncle um, is is uh, you know elderly, and um, you know he has a carer, and uh, you know we have to be. We were going to spend time together uh, during that five days of Christmas, but you know, one I, I think, you know, in a way, I have to say that I think the cancellation of those five days is a very very practical thing because. Who knows what would have happened? You know, you go into crowded shops, you, you pass that on, and the vulnerable, older people are more are vulnerable, and that's what I know. I'm preaching, and and but you know, it's brought it home to me. This how 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 easy it is to destroy lives and destroy the society in which we live by by being selfish, I suppose. So yeah so as much as it hurts me i'm i'm we're, we're keeping to ourselves you know so. but like you say it's it's so true you know we have to do you know you have to think about the big picture and, and think of the future i mean it's i know it's, it's going to sound harsh but it's one day yeah. of the of the rest of your life really you know is it it's re, is it really that important i know it's you know obviously it's a religious festival but you know it's going to happen again you know it happened it'll happen 2021 will make it twice as big you know I, I might not be popular for saying this but but it it it, it is it has, it has become known as a religious festival but actually it has become a very secular festival it's 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 become you know people buy presents so it's 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 very good for business and it's very it's no more the religious festival that it has been and if you believe in any religion you have to believe you have to believe in in some for, form of unanimity and 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 care for the people around you you know and yeah we can celebrate the life of jesus or muhammad or jehovah or you know any 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 god or goddesses or god 
we can do that anytime just by you know uh, as you say later on in the year um but we don't want to we don't want to endanger the lives of innocent people just because we want to have a you know i put my christmas tree up oh yes it's up there <laughs> yeah. We're letting the burgers of hampstead see 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 my, my <laughs> warm lights but um warm white lights you know we can enjoy ourselves and we can do what we're doing now exactly you can talk to people and you can see people which is something that you know 20 years ago would have never happened absolutely we i've been on the phone all yesterday this morning you know and even in india i've got an old couple whom i'm very very close to they're not my uncle and aunt but i think of them that way and i've known them all my life and you know they get very bad reception and they i haven't seen them for two years because i haven't been able to go back to india but they managed to get a hold um, of of a um, um, WhatsApp, you know, video, and at least we can see each other. Do you know what I mean? And I'm going to see my godchildren, and you know, my godson's just had two, two, uh, you know, twins rather, and I'm going to see him and his wife and the, and the babies, and and you know, it's going to be fine. We can do this. So come on, folks, <laughs> come on, fess up. It's not that bad, is it? Yes. Now, we must obviously talk about the strange situation when you did eventually get back to work at Coronation Street, because that must have been completely different to what you've ever been used to. Well, you know, it's, 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 it's extraordinary how we adapt. I mean, yes, it was very, very difficult. Not very difficult, but it was strange to walk into this, this, this building, this, this lot where there are always people running about, there are cameras, there's different people working in different areas, people coming in and out of studios. And it was so quiet, really. Um, you know, you, cause, and, and there, were, there were paths, you know, we have arrows to, to lead us up one way and lead us down the other day, other way, which means that our steps are going up a lot. I mean, this is very good for exercise. Um, and we have, um, obviously we're tested every morning, our temperatures are taken. If there's any, we're asked every day what, what our health is. Um, and if there's, if there's a headache or persistent headache or any, any indication that you might have some sort of symptom, whether it's a cold, or whatever, which is, which is difficult because look at the weather. I mean, you know, it's been, it's warm now. It has been cold. You don't know how people are going to get influenza, all those things, you know, colds and but yeah, we have to be very aware. We have to be very aware to keep ourselves safe. And there, there, there are ladies and gentlemen with, yes, two meter sticks. <laughs> and, um, and we have to be aware that we cannot, we must give each other space. We have to wear masks to studios, even if the studio is in the open, in the lot itself, we wear masks until we get into that protected space. Um, and and we have to we have to, and we have to be aware of this of this separation because you know it's 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 a it is like being in a war it is a war against this virus you know and uh, we've got to keep the flag flying you know got to keep cory in there and um and i imagine yeah. that you you because i know that actors are, are big ones for hugging and i imagine you just want to hug oh. your co-stars and, and your, co your colleagues but you can't man hugging is so i mean it's not only that, it's everybody. I want to go and see my, my godson's kids and my, my goddaughter's son. And I, you know, we were going to spend time together. And I want, yeah, I'm dying for a hug. But at least I've got Trilby. We can hug each other. Yeah. We can, you know, and that, that's, that's amazing. And, and the old, and, and what's, what's extraordinary actually is that, um, you know, because of the, because this storyline has, has reached so many people, there have been, and, and I think now because people are feeling very emotional, they, you know, I, there's a couple, couple of ladies actually in this, in quick succession the other day, walking down the street that uh, wanted to hug me or wanted to hug Yasmin. And my partner, she's very good. Cause I even, you know, you think it's such an outpouring of, of trust and, 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 and sharing of a story that, that has involved their own lives, you know, that they can identify with. I just want to re return that. And Trilby goes, no, <laughs> stop. And you think, so really, really sorry and do the elbow bit. But yes, um, it's difficult not to hug. We are hugging, we are hugging people, us actors. And so, but it's particularly difficult, you know, when you're actually trying to film a scene where, I mean, for instance, you know, Jane and the whole story of, of, the, of the baby. It's so difficult for actors to actually, you know, let give your you know obey those rules so you have to 
in some way use that separation. You have to be able to use that or find a reason, a dramatic reason to maintain that separation. And I think for the most part, we've been successful in doing that. Um, I know that some of the soaps, um, and it's not always possible to do this, but have actually used real life partners of the actors to do those hugging scenes, holding hand scenes, um, you know, the, the slightly riskier scenes as well. Yeah, I think, I think as far as I know, you know, there's a lot of two handers. Emmerdale did a lot of two handers. Um, and then, then that became possible also because, for instance, um, I don't, I don't, we, don't, we don't actually have many partners. I mean, um, our producer and our assistant producer, our husband and wife, I don't think they're involved in any scenes. I can't remember. <laughs> Maybe they Anna Hitchcock, Mr. and Mrs. Hitchcock. <laughs> but, um, but um, for instance, when we had close scenes together during uh, the, the scenes on the roof, uh, we were given, we were tested and uh, frequently. Um, every three days, every two days, every third day. Um, because not only did we have to be together, but we also had stunt people to worry about, and, you know. Um, so, so I would imagine if there is a scene that where it cannot be avoided, then, then the company, whatever, the, whatever they are, whoever they may be, whether it's a Netflix or BBC or ITV, will in fact lots of films my friends were luckily and lucky enough to still have a film films being being produced and made um have to have had to stay in two weeks isolation before the beginning of the film um and only stay in their hotels during the film so that's been very very difficult but you know it all, all industries, including my own industry, have been so affected by this. And my heart, my heart goes out to restaurateurs and people like that, you know, and, and because at least you can buy things, you know, on, on the internet, but you can't have a virtual meal, can you? I mean, it's not going to happen. Although you can, you can, you can go and get takeaways, but that's, that's difficult. You know, it's not the same as being, sitting in a restaurant with somebody and enjoying that ambiance really. So my heart goes out to everybody, but you know, we, it doesn't matter. We have to learn to cope with it. We have to learn to cope with it. And the, you know, we should, we should just be great. I am so grateful just to be working. So, you know. I mean, it must be quite, it must be quite a nice feeling to know that obviously, you know, we had some of the soaps, EastEnders, Hollyoaks did have to take a break, um, yeah. you know, on, on screen, but Corrie kept going. And you must be proud that even in a pandemic, Corey kept going and didn't break yeah. at all on screen. It must be quite a nice feeling, the hard work that was done. I mean, it, it, you know, we always, the tradition is that we try to keep um, a, about two and a half to three months ahead of schedule. So when we broke um, last week, we, I mean, I'm just reading scripts that will go out um, in, so we filmed as far as I'm concerned, my apps are concerned till the end of February, beginning of March. So when I go back in January, I'll be doing those. So that, and so because there are six episodes a week, that's why we were able to slow that whole thing down and take it to three. Uh, of course, people found that difficult, you know, that, and, and that, that whole, in my, my, my particular case, that whole process was so slow. And because people wanted to see that, you know, a denouement of some sort that was difficult for them. But I think most people were really, were really glad that we we kept we kept going. And um, you know, respect to producers and the people who who managed to keep it all, and the writers and everybody at Corrie who had this. You know, there's a we must keep the flag. It was you know the Dunkirk spirit. That's what it was, and it still is really. So. Now, I wanted to obviously talk about your big storyline, which everyone, like we've been saying, has been following it from the, 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 the beginning. But for you do, you, do you remember the time when it was first mentioned to you, the, the, the abuse storyline? And what was your reaction to the storyline? Um, <clears throat> it was first mentioned to me, actually, by the former producer, uh, Kate Oates, in 2000, and I think it was the end of or mid-13 or the beginning of, two th no, 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 not 2013, 2000 and, oh my God, I'm getting all mixed up with my, uh, 2021, 29, 2019. Um, um, and then she left 
Um, so that always, when there's a change of producer, people come in with their own ideas, you have to finish off storylines of one before. So that, there was a great gap. But I, I really did think that, um, and I started to read a lot about it, and I really did think that Yasmin was ripe for that sort of coercion and that sort of abuse because, you know, every, all the men in her life had abandoned her or left her from her father to her, her, her son had died, um, you know, Sharif had left her, um, uh, uh, Cass, uh, or uh, the character, but, but Zidane had gone away, he's gone to Australia or whatever, and he doesn't want to come back, doesn't seem to care. <laughs> and um, um, so, and, and here is a woman in, in, from another country, but, but really has lived all her life in this country, coming from a quite, a, quite, a well, um, quite a wealthy family of restaurateurs. That's the history that we've been sort of placing in on occasion. But, but, but really, Fields has moved to Coronation Street to be near Cal originally, and is desperate to have some sort of connection in the world, you know? And then, having been alone for some time, she meets this charming man. In fact, I've just been uh, watching on, on YouTube, because um, uh, be, I want to ask for a compilation for this story from, from myself to keep. So I've been looking at, and I watched the, the first scene in, in the hospital where Audrey was, um, she had a, a slipped ankle, a strained ankle, and somehow Yasmin was involved in it, and she met Jeff. And then they had this little conversation and he was charming, you know, and then the, we didn't know. I mean, at that time, I don't even think that Barty, Ian knew what the storyline was because I think what we do in the street is we start, we start working ideas and we see how they work and then we see how they can be, things are planted, little things are planted. Um, I knew, but I d he didn't, and gradually, gradually, not, not, didn't take long, but this, this man, this man who was charming, and is, he's, he's ill, you know, became more and more dangerous over, over two years, actually, which was an extraordinary, um, I, I mean, I, I, achievement. I just, I'm so happy that, that uh, Ian McLeod, who, who took over as producer, really, and we talked about it a lot, respected the, the true stories of men and women who had really been through this and had suffered through this from uh, some of them for 30 to 30 to 35 years, you know. So to do something in usual soap terms, a storyline maximum, you know, a month, two months, wasn't going to be fair because you wouldn't, you, it, wouldn't, it, it wouldn't solve the problem. We, 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 tell, we, we tell stories that, that aid people, you know, that, 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 that open doors for people. And, you know, like the cancer story with lovely Sally Denever, you know, and, and that went on for some time. Um, um, suicide with Aiden, male rape with Jack. They have, they have a great lesson. They, they give us, give, give the public and ourselves as we do it, there are lessons to be learned, and particularly with the slow drip. This, this sort of abuse is a slow drip that you don't even know is happening to you until somebody makes you realize it. And I have had letters constantly, messages from women, um, and some men, but I have to say mostly women, um, that have completely um, supported this way of treatment. Because some of them have said to me, Quite a few women have said they haven't even didn't even realize what was happening to them until they saw it happening to somebody else. And I, I, I'm so proud that I, I really am, honestly, you know, theater, drama always has been about telling fables, opening doors for people, opening their eyes, however difficult it may be, from the Greeks to, to the modern theater, everything. And that's what Corey is doing, and we're reaching so many people. So I'm, I'm I'm really, really proud of that. And yeah. also to work alongside Ian, who I imagine is such a, a nice man to, to work with, but obviously he oh, plays absolutely. such an evil character. He can be evil. No, no, no. <laughs> um, well, yes. Um, and he very much, and we both very much understand 
that and I think that's that's the main thing that that Barty and I understand that Jeff is ill. He's not, you know, you know, you he may have won the best villain and actor, but 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 people like that, like Jeff, are not villains. They have suffered in their lives in some way that has made them so that made them feel that it's so necessary so vulnerable that they have they have to completely absorb it's like alien you want to completely take that person over otherwise you are not worthy to have that person and um and i think that's what and i think that's what we managed to achieve during because there were times even you know after chicken gate and things like that where he was or, or locking me in 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 the box he became so worried the character Jeff became so worried that Yasmin was going to leave him that he completely broke down, and that was real. That was these these men or the, the perpetrators of this abuse really do love, but they are incapable of trust, and that's that's the thing, um, and that's that's something that we all you know. Uh, we all have experienced in our lives any relationship. I defy anybody who is just who is enamored of, and in that first flush, you know, when when you meet your partner and that everything is going up, you want to keep them because you're scared they might leave you. <laughs> you don't want to see anybody else. Da, da, da. So there is that in every single person, except that in some people, because of the way they've been treated as kids, and we 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 we, we learn something about about we learn something about. Jeff uh, uh, about his his treatment of his father and he, why he became a magician, and 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 we've learned about Yasmin how she has been abandoned. So it's 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 a codependent relationship, and often it is. And these two people find each other, and that's it. You know. I was just going to say you must have felt so honoured to have been trusted with such an important storyline because obviously you know this has you know captured the nation's attention so you must be honored that that's been sort of bestowed upon you well do you know this that i have done a lot of theater in my in my 40 something years mostly theater and and the one of the reasons why i have come to coronation street is it is its huge propensity to tell stories and to teach and to reach people. Um, so I, I was banging on about from day one, having, trying to get such a storyline, to be honest. I mean, you know, she was the first Muslim character, but also, um, for instance, over the years, we have created a character who is, who, who is not identified by her ethnicity. You know, um, she's not a religious woman. Her family might be, her husband might be, um, her granddaughter might be, her grandson, but she is not. And 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 I think all of this is something that 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 I that I feel I I feel is excellent to have achieved, and for Coronation Street to have achieved, because certainly for all of my life, I have as an actor, I have been trying to 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 reach for something that that is simply about character rather than about one's ethnic identification and 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 therefore this storyline as well has helped that because you know you we you, you, we we've completely forgotten about whether one character is white and the other character is brown or anything like that we have see, completely been absorbed in the relationship of two people and yeah i feel honored to do it and um i yeah i i i, I feel that I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm honoured to have been trusted with that, that huge responsibility, really, and now, to have, and to have Ian at my side, you know, and uh, the, we, as I said in many interviews, and it's, we both have the humour of a, of a, of a fourteen-year-old boy, and that's helped us right through. <laughs> now, one of the scenes we have to talk about, which I think was a real turning point for the character, was of course the scenes in the Rovers when um, Jeff had forced her to put on that red dress that obviously yeah. didn't fit her wasn't right for her and it was just the way that obviously all the characters were starting to maybe turn a bit on Yasmin and felt that maybe she did have a drink problem um and obviously that's the kind of time when 
Yasmin needed her friends around her. And yet, if anything, she was being isolated, which is obviously a big part of being in, a, in an abusive relationship. Yes. I mean, I mean it, 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 what happened in that scene is that Jeff had been extraordinary Machiavellian in it because he had said one thing to, for instance, the people behind the bar, to, 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 to Peter and um, um, Ali's character was behind the bar as well, wasn't she, and they, um, and then, and then completely, we had, but we had seen, this is a wonderful piece of writing, we had seen what had happened before in the house. We, an extraordinary vulnerable scene of her, of him making her undress in front of him, which was a very difficult scene to, to shoot because obviously it went on for much longer than you see it. And it, um, we had a very lovely director, um, Guy Patrick, cleared the studio except for the camera people. So, because it's difficult for a woman of my age to, to take her clothes off in front of people. It is, it just is. It's a very vulnerable thing. So, so it, it was a one, the whole progression of that scene was, was very, because there were two things going on. There was this woman who was completely, who was wanting to, as you say, wanting some sort of, and she was hungry. Let's not forget she was starving. She hadn't eaten for two days. He kept putting that, those bloody sausages in front of her and she couldn't, she couldn't eat. I mean, because she, she also, he had given her um, a, a, a disease that, that, affected her appetite so um yeah so it was it and and, and that's be beautifully written and then and then we went we go back with her don't we and, and and uh she's um he pushes her into the house and locks the door so everything leads up to that that completely that complete com absolute feeling of fear and isolation which ultimately led to her her What's the word? She, I mean, she, I was going to say her, her her stabbing of Jeff, but it wasn't. It was herself, her feeling of self protection, her feeling that she couldn't take him. What was she going to do? She had nothing. This was an extremely bombastic, strong, you know, uh, capable woman that we. It was the seen. part where she finally snapped. She just couldn't take anymore. I mean, you know, she he, she was thrown on the floor. I mean, it, it, it was it was you know, wonder, wonderfully done. And, 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 and I'm not saying about by us, but the writing enabled us to, and the observation of the writers enabled us to, to do that. And it, it was so pathetic and uh, yeah, it was, but true, true, sad, sad. And, and let me tell you something, some of the stories that we had heard and continue to hear make that that scene almost anodyne when you when when uh, the things i've heard that women have had and men have had to put up with the degradation and terror i mean we've only i mean we try to show it as best we can uh, in a show that goes out at 7 30 that's all i can say and i mean the other thing i imagine which is quite nice is obviously you know you've won a few awards for this storyline um obviously you know partly in due to to you and ian's a talent uh, as actors but I imagine for you as well you kind of want to dedicate them as well to the other victims out there because it's an award that you can all share. Absolutely. Uh, uh, do you know awards are wonderful things to get. I'm not saying that they're not and you know one has a great sense of pride but they are achieved only with team effort um, and and you, you, one is one, you are served by the people who, in the story who, the, who you know, you're, you're served by the writer who's trying to tell the audience his story. You're served by the writer's experiences of life that have fed that him or her to produce that story. Then you're served by the actor who can take that on, hopefully, and, and put themselves by their own research and time and care into that. So it's, 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 it's not just about, you know, whether you get best actor, best storyline, you know, whatever, whether it's the Oscars or, or whatever, Digital Spy, I don't know, all of them. It's, 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 it's all a joint effort, really, and you must never forget that. And, and you know, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's sort of silly, or it's not a truism if I get best actress in one award and Barty gets best actor or somebody else gets all these things. It's, it's just people, it's like art, isn't it? You can't, it's lovely to get it, but you mustn't let it sort of define your life because, it, it, you, you know, you can't help it, you can't help but be proud, but 
it's it's about people you know some people don't like dali other people extraordinary well some people like angry you know it doesn't it's a great it's a great privilege to get one it's it's very it's i feel very grateful that people have been watching it and i feel uh, and i do and i think it's it's about all the suffering and the truth and the stories all stories come from a central truth and we it is the people who share that truth that that really and the people who have suffered those times that, that that deserve the praise and it's not only it's not you know the wonderful thing about Corrie is also that like all wonderful drama whether it's a greek drama shakespeare webster you know or restoration comedy restoration comedy tragedy whatever you have to have both these things otherwise people people will not absorb it. Do you know what I'm saying? Exactly. So, so you have, it's, it's not even about the scene itself, it's what happens before the scene, what happens after the scene, so that brings you into the scene. So, so I waffle on, but I really believe all these things, you know. And I mean, the other, the other thing as well is I imagine that when you take on a storyline like this, there, there must be a lot of research that you have to do behind <laughs> the scenes before you take it on. Well, that's what I've been saying, yeah. I mean, you know, uh, uh, Women's Aid uh, uh, shared, you know, introduced us to people we've talked to. We've talked to um, one woman in particular, two women in particular that have shared their stories. We have, we have received letters, long letters uh, of, explanate, of, 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 his, of history, of people's history. Um, and so many people have, have actually, um, the doors have been opened to them, so they they felt they could then talk about and or, or seek help in a way. So, yeah, of course you can't. There is no piece of authentic drama that affects people's lives that hasn't actually been researched and isn't about something something true, you know, something that's in humanity that that only hum, that human any human and human being has experienced. That doesn't happen. It must also have been quite nice to have had such a big storyline involved in the 60th anniversary, which yeah. for Coronation Street is obviously a huge thing. It's the longest running soap in the world. So to be a part of that must be pretty, pretty fun. Oh, it's such an honour. Such an honour. I mean, you know, I, I did a, I, I think I did a Loose Women or something like that um, the day before. Um, and I was saying things like tonight when it was tomorrow night because I was because I knew what was in it and I was so excited and, and I didn't know what I was saying because I was so nervous. I know we'd done the thing, but I was really nervous about what it looked like because we'd seen sort of green screen um, uh, early cuts, but I didn't know what it was going to look like. And, um, you know, it, it, we spent three nights out there. I mean, it, it seems it seems very it seems very uh, quick to you to the viewer but uh we spent a lot of time out there um and 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 also the 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 stunt the stunt men and gals were just amazing and camera people were just amazing so yeah i was really really nervous really nervous about that and actually the courtroom scenes which i think were beautifully constructed um by the writers um so that whole last bit i think was very very important and now the story the show must go on, <laughs> and it will, and it will, because because this sort of abuse, ha having women and men having suffered it, it just doesn't disappear. It will stay with with Yasmin for a long time. I'm not saying that we're not going to get comedy back, because please God, I want to do that. You know, I want I want I want the orangery walls to come back. You know, um, but it would be wrong of us to simply ignore that this has happened. We can't, can't do that. I mean, obviously Jeff, like we say, is now dead in, in case anyone didn't realize. And obviously Ian has left. So, I mean, I know you can't talk too much about the, what the future holds, but what would you like to see happen for Yasmin going forward? How would you like her life to, to, to kind of continue? I, I, yeah, I mean, there are so many possibilities, and obviously I can't tell you what I know at the moment, but I hope she can find some sort of companionship. I, I, I hope she can help people in the way, because of her experiences, um, and I hope she can allow some joy into her life and, and, and sort of find again some of that, that sometimes quite ridiculous bombast that she had. 
because I'd like to to find that in there. I like to make people laugh, you know, as well as, but, and I and I think the thing about comedy is that some of the most, the, some of the most, um, the funniest men and women have been through the most brutal um, things in their real life. I mean, you know, Tony Hancock committed suicide. Uh, Morecambe and Wise, you know, they, they had, Eric Morecambe was a genius, but he couldn't have done it without, without the straight man Ernie. And they had, you know, they, they, had, they had successes, they had failures that, I mean, it, 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 so, so I think comedy and tragedy are, are really, there are two masks and they're very, they're very close together. So hopefully we can use what's happened and, and, and perhaps look at it in another way and see how that has affected her and has, but, but still, let's, let's remember who she was. Let's remember who she was and, and let's see that come out again. Let's see that, that sort of imp opinionated um, and, and it's like slightly eccentric woman, you know, um, a bit like Sally, actually. They were very, they were very, they're very similar in there. In the, so, so that's what made that funny. You know, so let's see whether relationships can grow and let's see whether she can, whether she can, yes, she, let's see what happens to her through the history of what you have, you and I have seen and experienced. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm hoping that we'll see more of Yasmin with Kathy because I think they were, they, they are good friends. They're a great partnership. And also, yeah. I, I think that potentially going forward, we could see. Um, a bond between um, obviously Tim and Yasmin, obviously their connection through his, the, the, yeah. you know, through, through Jeff. Yeah, I mean, you know, let's, she is now Yasmin Nazia Metcalf, after all. And um, yes, I mean, I think, I think there will, I think there should be some sort of, I mean, Kathy is a great friend. Eileen has seen a lot of what's happened to her. So I think we want, we want her to, to sort of go into the community, you know, and um, there's there's also Elaine who's entered into her life. Let, let's not forget. So, with these this cabal of 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 lonely women, although Eileen seems to do all right with a husband, you know, not not always the best choice, shall we say? Um, but she seems to do quite well with the with the partnership choices. But there are, there are there are many possibilities now that. I think, and I hope, that Yaz is, has become really a, a part of the fabric of Coronation Street. I think, I would hope this story has done that for her. And hopefully, fingers crossed, you will be sticking around. I'm hoping that we won't be seeing you go anywhere anytime soon. No, we don't know. I don't know. One never knows, do one. So, um, but um, uh, yes, I mean, I'm, I, I, I love being a part of this. Uh, legendary soap opera um, and as far as I I'm concerned I think I'm only just beginning so to understand her and I and I think Yasmin and Cory have a lot lot more to offer each other I hope anyway now, I just want to say this is a good, you know, good chance to, to, to end the interview. But thank you so much. It's been a pleasure speaking to you. But before we go, have you got any messages for anyone who is at the moment stuck in hospital, not having the best of times at the moment? Well, yes. I mean, you know, um, on, on, on a sort of strange note, we're, we're all very much drawn together because we're all stuck in somewhere um, um, and we, we've got nowhere to go. We have time to think. But, you know, if you are in hospital, um, you are in a place of that there's that um, how can I explain it? you're 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 surrounded by people whose business it is to care for you um, and who will give you the best possible care to make you better um, and I think I think I think that's all we we can hope for and 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 hospital, you can do this still. You are allowed to bring your computers in and and see each other. So just 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 you are in a safe place, everybody. And you know, be positive. And I think that's a message now to to all every single person who lives in the world actually is to be positive and hopeful and inclusive and just just trust trust that. Take care of yourselves and each other and the people who, who, who are trying to make you better 
and respect each other. I think, I think that's what all this time needs. And everybody in hospital, everybody in their homes, everybody walking the street, we need to care for each other and we need to trust each other. And uh, a hospital and, and the NHS, people who work in the NHS have displayed that so much in the last, particularly in the last, all, they do it all the time, but it's been palpable in the last few, well, in the last year really, since, since this horrible virus um, reared its ridiculous and ugly and destructive head. So um, be careful in hospital, take care of each other. You will get better. There are people out there, people in there looking after you. And um, remember there are people out there who love you. And that's the main thing. And just to try and enjoy, have a good rest, I think. That's all, that's all you can do and get better soon. Now, I just want to say, Shelley, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for giving up your time. Of course, keep safe and a happy Christmas and a happy new year to you. Happy Christmas. And let's hope the new year is, well, it can only get better, can't it? Let's face it. All right. Take care and happy Christmas to you and all your listeners. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.